Hi everyone. I got a question about how bones are remodeled. So I wanted to record the answers. So we could all follow along. First, we need to review some terms, some anatomy. If you've ever picked up a bone, maybe at a nature center, something like that, you were touching the cortical or compact bone. This is what most of us think about when we think about bone. We think about this, this dense cortical bone. This makes up about 80% of the bone by mass, and this is where we store minerals, for example, calcium, but a whole bunch of other ones as well. But we also have this trabecular or spongy bone that people don't think about as often. Trabecular or spongy bone is where the marrow is. There are two different types of marrow. There's yellow and there's red. The yellow marrow is uh, fat, essentially it's fat storage. And the red marrow is where hematopoiesis takes place. Hematopoiesis is when we make new blood cells. We can actually make up to a trillion of those every single day, which is really amazing to think about. So when we're born, most of our bones have red marrow. However, as we grow, a lot of times, especially in the long bones, that red marrow is replaced by yellow marrow. So by the time we're adults, we only have a small handful of bones with this red marrow that are producing all of our red blood cells. So those include the ribs, the bodies of the vertebrae, the cranium, the sternum, and a few others. Otherwise, as adults, most of our bones have fat storage in the middle or the yellow marrow. So a lot of times we think about bones as these, as kind of like rocks, these sort of stable, not super exciting, unchanging, structural things. That is absolutely not true. These are, they're living tissues that are dynamic. They're changing all the time. So let's look at the structure in a little more detail. We need to look at two things. One, we need to look at the matrix that's in the bone, and then we also need to look at the cells that are living within this matrix. So when we take a closer look at a bone, especially the outer area of the bone or the cortex, um, the compact bone, we see that there's these little circular patterns. Those are called osteons. That's kind of like a unit of this compact bone. And the osteon has these rings in it uh, called lamellae. And those are rings of collagen, mostly. Those are, co those are made of collagen fibers. And the, they're all running in the same direction. So the out, this outer ring of lamellae, all the collagen fibers in that, in that particular ring would be going in the same direction. The ones on the next layer in would be sl going in a slightly different direction, all of them. And that just adds to the structural integrity. So these osteons run the length of the bone. And those are the weight-bearing parts of the bone. That's what's responsible for the kind of structural integrity of the bone. So that's all just protein, right? That's what collagen is, is just lengths of protein. Then we also have, in the middle, we have a little channel with blood vessels and nerves running through it. And the reason we need blood vessels and nerves in here is because we also have cells, these little dark blue things here scattered throughout our cells, living, breathing cells. And so we have to have blood vessels so these cells can remove waste, so they can receive nutrients and communicate with the rest of the body. However, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. Uh, some of these cells are pretty far removed from this channel in the middle here, so how are these cells going to be receiving blood and removing waste? And it turns out that there's little channels that connect this middle canal to um, all the different cells throughout. So this next picture I think is really cool. This is a diagram depicting what would happen if we removed all of the structural components of the blood and we're just looking at this middle canal where the blood vessels run through and these are the called canaliculi that connect this canal to each of these purple cells. And you can see that there's this intense network connecting the cells to each other and to the blood and nerve supply. So, so these, this, this is bone tissue. This is what's happening. All of these cells are talking to each other all of the time. And it's, I think it's really cool. So the next thing we need to talk about is the different types of cells that are in bone and how we go about this remodeling process. So osteocytes are the cells that kind of hang out there in the osteons, right? Those are the um, semi-permanent resident cells. But we also have some specialized cells that both break down and build up the bone. 
and those would be the osteoclasts, which break down or resorb bone, and the osteoblasts, which form the bone or lay down new bone, and of course stem cells, which help regenerate different types of, of um, osteocytes. Okay, so when we're talking about bone remodeling, we're constantly undergoing this process. The bones are, are constantly breaking down and building up. And this is actually a good thing. We want to break down the bone so that we can put down new bone. So one of the things, one of the reasons exercise is so important for bones is because the, the stress that we put on the bones during exercise stimulates this breakdown and then building up process. So it keeps the bones strong. If they don't have that stimulus, they can actually atrophy. So also remember that bones are a major reservoir of calcium in the body. So when we want to, um, we want to regulate calcium very closely in the blood because it's so important for muscular contraction, signaling with, via neurons, and so on and so forth. So it keep, it needs, we need to maintain a very um, specific range of calcium. When the calcium in the blood starts to get low, we can actually tap into the reservoir in the bones and release some of that matrix so that those calcium ions can enter the blood and maintain the uh, calcium levels there. So what we need to do, if we sense that calcium levels are slipping too low or if there's stress on the bones and um, the, the body wants to go kind of rebuild those stressed areas, the first thing that we need to do is stimulate osteoclasts to come in and um, break down the bone. So parathyroid hormone is one of the major hormonal signals that stimulates osteoclasts. So that will respond to low calcium in the blood or um, if, they're, if the bones are stressed from exercise, something like that, which the osteocytes sense and send out um, signaling molecules that indicate this. The osteoclasts will then come into play. And what the osteoclasts do is they re release uh, an acidic sub substance that breaks down the minerals in the bone, kind of um, causes them to ionize and then go back into the blood so that they can be used there. It also releases enzymes that break down collagen. So essentially the structure, the matrix of the bone is getting broken down by these osteoclasts. When they are done, fortunately, they undergo apoptosis, so they can't hurt anything, they can't overdo it, but they also stimulate or call in the osteoblasts. And the osteoblasts actually put down new bone or new bone matrix specifically, um, including collagen and polysaccharides. And these cells, these osteoblast cells, can actually absorb minerals from the blood and put it back into the bone. So if you've got extra and you don't need that much, you can store it right there in the bone in the bone. Um, osteoblasts are stimulated by calcitonin. So one really interesting thing about osteoclasts before we wind down is that they are actually derived from monocytes and macrophages. So they're a modified phagocyte and that makes sense, right? Because they're kind of gobbling up bone and breaking it down and that's basically what phagocytes do. Anyway, I hope that helps explain bone remodeling a little bit. Just keep in mind that we we want the bones to remodel, that's a constant and ongoing process. And when you're exercising, you're stimulating your bones to undergo this remodeling process. It's one of the reasons it's so important, not just to uh, bear weight on your legs, but also to do things that involve your arms, bearing weight in uh, as many different ways as you can, because only the specific places in the bone that bear that weight will be um, stimulated to undergo this remodeling process. All right, let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you soon.